Hello and welcome to the 2021 ACA Open Enrollment Webinar. I'm Rachel Dower and I'm here with Karen Carter. We are both financial advocates with Carol's Wish, which is a program of the Colorado Ovarian Cancer Alliance. The mission of our program is to ensure that nobody goes without medical care or receives substandard medical care for financial reasons. To do so, we currently work with patients with gynecologic cancers to help minimize their out-of-pocket medical expenses. One of the best ways to do this is through insurance optimization, making sure that each patient has the best and most appropriate insurance policy given her diagnosis, treatment plan, and financial circumstances. So that's a great place to start and the reason we're doing this webinar today. Sometimes we can't do enough to optimize a patient's insurance, in which case we're often able to find other ways to help minimize their out-of-pocket medical expenses. So please do feel free to reach out to myself or Karen anytime if you need more assistance with choosing or enrolling an insurance plan, or if you're feeling the financial burden of your medical treatment and you need help beyond insurance. We will provide our contact information at the end of this presentation for you. So let's get started. First, we'll go through some basic information just to get some background and understanding of how health plans work, debunk a few myths about health insurance, and we'll let you know where to shop for plans and what to look for. Um, next, Karen will actually walk you through the website for the Colorado Marketplace so you can get familiar with the website and how to shop for and compare plans. So what is open enrollment? Well, open enrollment is the time of year when you can enroll in an Affordable Care Act or ACA health plan or switch between plans through what's called the marketplace. I do wanna point out that your insur insurance policy is not written in stone. Even if you're outside of the open enrollment period, there are certain circumstances that will trigger what's called a special enrollment period. That's a period of time when you'll be able to enroll in or change plans, but that's typically only going to be an option if you have had a major life change. So a significant change in income, having a baby, getting married and move out of state, et cetera. Or if you recently lost your coverage through your employer or if you were dropped from Medicaid. If you have a change in circumstances during the year, please feel free to always reach out to us and we'll help you determine whether you're eligible to make a change in your health plan. Um, just another note, there are limited private plans available outside the marketplace, but we're not going to cover those here. You'd be best off speaking with a broker to learn more if you're not able to find something that suits your needs through the marketplace. Uh, so the open enrollment period this year started on November 1st and it goes through December 15th. If you enroll in a plan anytime during this period, your coverage will begin January 1st of 2021. So we're gonna jump right in and get familiar with some of the lingo to make sure we're all up to speed on the basics. Um, first is the premium. That's the amount you pay each month for your policy. Your premium will remain the same throughout the year, although it may and probably will go up each year when your plan renews. You pay your premium each month, regardless of the amount of health care you use in that month. The least amount you're going to spend on your health care in any given years is the in any given year is the total of your monthly premiums. So just for easy math, if your premium was hundred dollars a month, your total premiums in a year would be $1,200. So if you used zero healthcare in that year, you would still spend $1,200 that year. Your deductible is the amount you must pay for healthcare before your plan pays anything. So for example, if you have a $3,000 surgery and your deductible is $1,000, you have to pay that $1,000 before your health plan kicks in at all. Your health plan would then start paying its share of the remaining $2,000 of that surgery. And the amount they're gonna pay varies depending on um, the specifics of your policy. A copay is a set amount that you're gonna pay for a covered visit or procedure. For example, you may have to pay $20 to see your doctor or $30 for a prescription, regardless of the actual price of that doctor visit or prescription. So sometimes you may be paying more than it would have actually cost and sometimes less. Coinsurance is the amount of your healthcare costs that you must pay after your deductible is met. That's typically expressed in a percentage. For example, if you have a $100 procedure and you've already met your deductible and your coinsurance is 20%, you're gonna pay 20% or $20 and your insurance will pay the other 80% or $80. Plans will vary on whether they use copays and or coinsurance. Co some use just one or the other and some use both. The maximum amount of pocket, or MOOP as we like to call it, is the maximum amount that you'll have to spend on your health care in any given year. Once you have spent this amount out of pocket on deductibles, coinsurance, and copays, your plan will pay 100% of your covered health care costs for the rest of the year. It's important to note that the amount you paid for your premiums is not included in your max out of pocket amount. So to figure out your true total maximum out of pocket for the year, you would need to add together the total of your premiums and your MOOP amount. So for example, if your premiums, like we said before, are $100 a month, that's $1,200 a year. So remember, that's the least you're gonna end up paying for healthcare in that year. If you use a whole lot of healthcare in that year, 
The absolute most you'll be paying that year is the $1,200 for the premiums plus the MOOP amount. So suppose your MOOP is $1,000. That'd be a total of 2,200 that you would pay for healthcare in that year, all in. Most people will fall somewhere between the total monthly premiums and the premiums plus the MOOP. However, for those with a cancer diagnosis, many will hit their MOOP pretty quick. So it's crucial to look at that maximum exposure when considering which plan is best for you. So what probably helps to make sense of all this <clears throat> is an example. I know this looks complex, but give me a minute and we'll go through it together. So let's suppose Joe has a deductible of $550, a MOOP or max out of pocket of $1,000, and his coinsurance is 20%, which means his plan pays 80%. He also has a copay of $50 for an office visit. So let's suppose, suppose Joe first goes in for an office visit. The doctor charges $100, but since Joe has a $50 copay under his plan, he will only pay $50. Because remember, a copay means he pays the set amount regardless of the actual amount of the visit. His plan will pay the other $50 here. So for keeping track of how much Joe's $550 deductible has been met, it's now up to $50. Since he has paid $50 out of pocket, he's also met $50 of his $1,000 max out of pocket or MOOP. Joe now needs surgery that costs $1,000. We know that since Joe has coinsurance of 20%, that means his plan pays 80% of his care, but don't forget he has to meet that $550 deductible first. So as we discussed earlier, the deductible is the amount the patient must pay before the plan pays anything. Well, he's only met $50 of that $500, $550 deductible. So the first $500 is going to be Joe's responsibility. After he pays that $500, he has now met his deductible of $550 which means that his plan will now pay for 80% of his medical bills. After the $500 he paid toward his deductible, there's $500 left to pay for the surgery. Joe has to pay 20% of that, which is $100. So the total amount he's gonna pay for that $1,000 surgery is $600. His plan will pay for the remainder of the $1,000 bill or $400. Adding Joe's portion of the 600 to the $50 he's already paid towards his max out of pocket, we can see that he has now met $650 of his $1,000 max out of pocket. It turns out that Joe needs a second surgery. So here's the second surgery that costs $1,750. So remember that Joe has met his deductible of $550 and his coinsurance is 20%. So the plan pays for 80% of everything going forward. So Joe's coinsurance for this $1,750 surgery will be $350. That $350 is then applied towards his max out of pocket of $1,000. And when we add that to the $650 that he's already paid, Joe has now paid $1,000 out of his maximum out of pocket. So that means that beyond his monthly premium, which he has to pay regardless, Joe does not have to pay for any more covered healthcare services. He has met his max out of pocket and his plan will pay 100% for the rest of the year. So when Joe breaks his leg later, that year in a fall, the $10,000 bill is paid entirely by his health plan and he has no responsibility. All right, so we have the basics of how health insurance plans work. Now let's talk a little bit about the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare as some of you may know it. There are two big myths I wanna make sure to debunk. First, the myth that you cannot get insurance coverage with a pre-existing condition or that your plan will drop you if you are diagnosed with a serious illness. And the second myth is that health insurance is just too expensive. Many patients I work with simply believe they are priced out of health insurance. Well, the Affordable Care Act addresses both of these concerns. So under the Affordable Care Act, insurance companies must cover members with pre-existing conditions without charging a higher premium. So even for folks who already have a cancer diagnosis, they cannot be denied nor charged a higher premium due to their diagnosis. Second, the Affordable Care Act requires insurance companies to pay for basic preventive care, which includes things like vaccinations, pap smears, mammograms, et cetera. And the third other really important feature of the Affordable Care Act is that financial assistance is available to ensure that premiums and out-of-pocket costs are affordable for everyone. And we'll get back to the specifics of that in just a minute, but first I wanna talk about the types of health plans that are available in, under the ACA. So as you can see, there are three types of plans, bronze, silver, and gold. As you probably guessed, gold is going to give you the best coverage, but since you get what you pay for, it's also gonna have the highest premiums. So the gold plans are a good choice for those who anticipate needing a lot of healthcare throughout the year. On the other end, on the other end of the spectrum, the bronze plans have the lowest premiums, but the plan is also going to pay less of their healthcare costs. 
These plans are typically a better choice for those who don't anticipate needing a lot of healthcare throughout the year. The silver plans can be a little tricky, but typically tend to be the best for those who qualify for financial assistance. So let's talk about the financial assistance available. There's two types available and eligibility for both types is determined solely by your income. The first type is called premium tax credits and the purpose is to reduce the cost of the monthly premiums. These are tax credits, not deductions. So they will offset your tax liability dollar for dollar. Or if you have no tax liability, you will just get those dollars either in the form of a reduced premium or as a tax refund at the end of the year. If you qualify for premium tax credits, you have two choices. You can take them in advance by paying a lower monthly premium, or you can pay the full premium each month throughout the year and claim the credit on your taxes when you file. One thing to note though, the tax credits are available on a sliding scale based on income. In order to determine your available premium tax credit, you'll need to predict your income for the following year. At the end of the year, if your income is higher than you thought it was gonna be, and therefore you were entitled to less premium tax credits, and you have taken those in advance, you are gonna to have to pay those back. On the other hand, if your income is lower than you thought it was going to be, you will get a refund of the amount you were actually entitled to. So these credits are available to those with an income of less than 400% of the poverty level. In a few slides from now, I'm gonna show you a little chart so you can see what that looks like. But just to give you an idea, 400% uh, of the federal poverty level for a household of one, one person is just around $50,000. So these premium tax credits are not just for the very, very low income group. In fact, 77% of consumers qualify for financial assistance of some sort under the ACA. Also important to note, premium tax credits are available to any level plan, bronze, silver, or gold. Um, I do wanna mention that if you are offered an employer sponsored plan that's affordable and provides, provides minimum essential coverage, which most employer sponsored plans do, you're not gonna be eligible for a premium, premium tax credit. The same is true if your income is below 138% of the federal poverty level, you are then eligible for Medicaid and you'll be inspected to enroll in Medicaid rather than taking the premium tax credit on an ACA plan. Uh, the other type of financial assistance is called cost sharing reductions. So to qualify for cost sharing reductions, um, you do have a lower income threshold, which is less than 250% of the federal poverty level. So back to an example of a household size of one, CSRs would be available to those making under approximately $31,000 a year. Again, they're available on a sliding scale based on income, and they are also unavailable to those who are offered employer plans or those who are eligible for Medicaid. And another important note um, is that CSRs are available only if you buy a silver plan. So when you're looking at plans and comparing them, if you are eligible for cost sharing reductions, you wanna make sure that you're only looking at the silver plans. Um, so how do they work? Well, they do two things. One, they reduce the deductibles and the max out-of-pocket amounts on your plan. And two, they increase the actuarial value of the plan, which means the amount paid by the plan. So if the plan typically pays 70% with the cost-sharing reduction, uh, that same plan may pay 75 or 80 or even 90%, depending on your income. It can get complicated trying to calculate the specifics, but the Colorado Marketplace has made it easy. And... Um, you'll see later when Karen goes through it. If you go on the website, there will be a place where you can enter your income and the number in your household, and it will let you know exactly which kind of financial assistance is available to you and in what amount. So as promised, here's a chart showing a percent of the federal poverty level for different household sizes. So like I said, you can just enter your income in a calculator and it will let you know, but this will give you an idea of whether you might qualify. Remember that the premium tax credits are available for those with incomes under 400%, which is this column here. The cost sharing reductions are available for those with a household income of less than 250% of the federal poverty level. So it needs to be under um, this amount in this column here, based on your household size. And 138% um, is on here because that's a threshold for Medicaid in Colorado. If your income falls below this 138% based on your household size, you will qualify for Medicaid and that's the program that you should be enrolling in. So as you'll see when you start to shop, there are a plethora of different policies available. So we tried to narrow down the most important factors to consider when choosing a policy. First is my current provider in the plans network. If you have a doctor you've been seeing for a while or that you really love and you wanna keep seeing, make sure that provider is in network on the plan that you're looking at. And in fact, I would recommend that you not only check the plan, but check with your doctor's office as well. Likewise, you want to make sure that any medications you're currently taking or you know you're going to be taking in the future 
are also going to be covered under your new plan. Next, you also want to look at whether the plan covers out-of-network providers. Some plans like HMOs have a very limited network and you're expected to stay within that. So this works fine for some people, but I've seen this become an issue when someone wants an outside second opinion or doesn't like the doctor in their network or if they want to participate in a clinical trial. So that's just something to think about as well. Of course, we, of course my dog is going to bark now the pitfalls of working from home. Um, of course, we want to look at the cost of the monthly premiums. We want to know how much is the deductible. You want to know what's the maximum amount of pocket amount for the policy. If you think you're going to be using a lot of health care in the coming year and you'll meet your max out of pocket, you can easily compare plans by simply adding together the total monthly premiums for the year and the max out of pocket amount. That will let you know the most you're going to be spending on health care with that particular plan. Thankfully, you can filter plans by doctor, medication, and all sorts of different variables. And you can see all of this information on one page when you shop for plans and compare them on the website. So this is the website here. It's connectforhealthco.com. Connect um, this is Colorado's official health insurance marketplace, and it's the only place you can apply for financial assistance with your health care plan. Um, if you go shopping directly with um, health insurance carriers, um, you may not be eligible for that financial assistance. So do make sure that you're going through um, the official health insurance marketplace at this website here. Um, in just a minute, Karen's gonna walk you through how to use the website to shop for, compare and enroll in ACA plans. Um, but I first just wanted to throw up here um, our contact information and to let you know, uh, feel free to reach out anytime if you have questions or you need assistance with anything on the financial side of your medical care. Um, and you can also find us on the COCO website under uh, programs and Carol's wish. And with that, I will hand it over to Karen. Thanks, Rachel. Let me get my screen share going here. <clears throat> so as Rachel said, the uh, website for the Connect for Health um, uh, Marketplace is connectforhealthco.com. And this is what the screen is gonna look like when you sign on. And we're just gonna walk through as anonymous person today so we can kind of fill in those uh, spots that Rachel mentioned as far as the income and so forth. So we're gonna start as a new customer. And as we... Okay, as we scroll down the page here, oh, let me go back here. <clears throat> Okay, here we go, new customers. So uh, I just wanted to point out as we scroll down the page here, Rachel had mentioned the annual income for the household of one at 51040 at 268 and then four, it can go all the way up to 104,800. So we're gonna scroll down to the bottom of the page and we're gonna uh, hit the find help button. And that'll take us to the top right, the green button shot for plans. So, and again, this kind of just lets you know that this is an anonymous tool that they have. You can even put in a, a fake name, but I would certainly suggest putting in the actual year that you're born so you can get a, an accurate read for how much it's gonna cost you. So we're gonna put in Jill here and we've got a female and we're gonna put her date of birth is 1959. And if she is a tobacco user, you would click this little button here, but we're gonna say she's not. Then you put in your zip code, which will automatically populate to what county you're in. And then you're going to need to go over to uh, start date of 1121. And the next question is going to ask if you want to know if you qualify for an financial help. And of course we do, because that's why we're on the site here. Another important uh, key that you need to kind of read going through this, if there's anybody else in your household Perhaps your husband is a little older and he's already on Medicare, um, but we're gonna have that combined income. So we're gonna add, Jill has a husband, name is, let's put his name is Jack, and he is on Medicare. So we're gonna put him at 1954. And together, Jack and Jill have a combined income of, we're gonna say 31,000. So good news. It shows that with the premium tax credit that Rachel explained earlier, the uh, Jill can get a reduction of uh, a pretty large amount of $590 per month. 
She's also eligible for those, uh, the cost reduction of copay deductible and that max out of pocket. And again, to take advantage of that, she would have to sign up for a silver plan. So let's kind of take a look at next screen, which they ask you to estimate usage, whether you are considered low usage, and they kind of give you some guidelines for what that is. Low would be, for example, two visits with a doctor, one outpatient visit, zero days in the hospital. Medium would come to eight visits with the doctor, one outpatient, and one day in the hospital. And then we have the high at 23, three outpatient and two days in the hospital. So for Jill, we're gonna just say she's got a medium use here. And if that all looks good, click the blue button on the bottom. And like Rachel talked about, if you have a doctor that you really wanna make sure is gonna be in your network and you want to remain with them, go ahead and put their name here. We'll kind of pop up. So Jill's physician is gonna be Amy Smith. You can kind of see she's got two offices in Denver on Federal Boulevard in Bannock. We'll go to the next screen here to continue. And then uh, important is also the medications that you're currently taking or anticipate taking. So we're gonna go put carbo, carboplatin on here. And that will, you can kind of see it's now here and they're gonna go through what form you receive with that. So we're gonna put injection. They'll ask the strength that you're gonna have. We only have one option here with that one. Then they're also gonna ask how many times per year do you fill that prescription? So for her, we're gonna say we do that uh, six times. And then how many days are included in each refill? We will say 60, 60 on that one. So we're gonna add that to the list. If you kind of go up to the list, you'll see that now carboplatin is on there, but let's add another drug to this as well. <clears throat> so we're gonna add paclitaxel. Again, you're gonna go through the same questions, the form that that's given, injection format, the strength, how many times per year, let's put four on that one. And then how many days are for each refill? Let's put, let's put 30 on that. And we're gonna add that to the list. So if you kind of go up a little bit, you'll see that both those drugs are now on there and you'll go to the bottom for the continue. So we found 50 different plans that Jill has an option to choose from. So we'll kind of take a look at what those are. So the first one to pop up is Bright. I just want to talk about um, on the right-hand side, I think the, one of the, the best things to look for is this little thing here is for the physician, whether this particular plan is going to cover your physician. And in this case, if you kind of hover over that, it's not gonna cover her physician. So she wants to maybe keep looking. Also on the prescription side, it's only gonna cover one of those drugs, the carbo versus the taxol. So um, just to kind of go back a little bit, this is what her monthly premium would be, 136.51. It kind of shows what that total premium would be without that tax credit of 590. And then we this figure here, Rachel talked about earlier, that would be, the figure that would be the 12 times that monthly premium, but also adding into that, that annual MOP max out of pocket. So it's gonna be the 2,800 plus her premiums. But we're gonna go through here to see, make sure that we can find out a plan that covers both her doctor and the prescriptions. So first one we come across is Oscar, and you see that there is one out of one, so it covers her doctor. And then it also covers both of those both of those medications that she's taking. This particular plan again is 185.68 a month. Max out of pocket is 2,800, and this figure represents again those 12 monthly premiums during the year plus that max out of pocket. Over to the far right hand side, you can actually click this box and compare that plan. That's a good plan to compare because it has everything she needs. And then we'll go to the next page. You can compare up to three different plans here. So we'll get another carrier as well to add to a comparison. You can also see that we're looking at the silver ones because that's what's gonna um, get her for that cost sharing reduction amount. We wanna be able to do that. So here's another one with the physician she needs and the prescriptions. We're gonna mark that. 
the premiums over here are 262.22. Here's her max out of pocket. So let's see if we can grab one more to take a look at. So she's got another Oscar here. So let's click that one. And then we'll go back up to the top and compare those three plans. So you can kind of see just a flush here, they're all, we have uh, all silver again, so she can take advantage of that, that um, reduction or max out of pocket. And it kind of runs through your yearly cost for each one of these plans. It has the monthly amount of your premium for each one of these, what the advanced tax credit is at 590, and then your annual deductible. Typically that annual deductible uh, is going to be a little less the higher those premiums are. Then you kind of get to a little more detail down here where each your physician is covered in all of these as well as the medications. And you can actually uh, enroll from this site if you desire to do that as well. Okay. Turn it back over and see if we have any questions to answer here. Well, I don't see any questions, Karen, but um, I think we can, um, we did go ahead, we can just let people know that we did go ahead and record this um, webinar. So if you, um, you know, wanted to look at it more closely, again, it will be available, I believe on the COCA website. Um, we'll shoot out another email, just letting folks know um, where they can find it. And um, as we said before, um, also Karen or I are always available um, to answer any questions, we did show our contact information earlier, and um, you can also find us on the COCO website um, under Programs and Carol's Wish. Thank you both so much.